all right so here we are welcome to the tutorial let's go over the uh chronos uh sgx2 sound engine let's go over some of the parameters here you know just so you can kind of understand what exactly you have under your hood the pianos in the chronos are highly editable because they are um they're modeled and there's a lot of different parameters and stuff that you can change to get the kind of sound that you want so i do recommend kind of learning uh the various parameters that go into uh, making your piano sound the way you want it to sound so uh, without much further ado uh, if you just click on program you should come to this screen or if you go to uh, keyboard once you click on program go to keyboard if you go to all you select the first uh, acoustic piano there you're going to have the berlin grand sw2uc um, and just hit okay um, just so we have a starting kind of common um, common area so if you're following along you can be in the same place that I am uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to touch the screen here touch the piano and that's going to open up more of the parameters so that I can see them and uh, this is the SGX2 um, sound engine and this is the uh, UI uh, for it here so uh, what we're going to do is take a look here it's first on the left hand side top left you see it says piano type now the piano type is the Berlin D1S piano type really is describing which multi samples you're playing or which piano sample uh, you're actually playing. Uh, the Kronos has multiples of them. If I click on it and uh, click like the up arrow here, now you can see it's a Berlin D2S, a Berlin D bright 1S and so on and so forth. If I just click on just the arrow, it's going to open up the various um, samples that I have uh, in my Kronos that I can choose from in order to get my sound started. Uh, so in other words, you don't have to use the sounds that come with the Kronos right out of the box, the way they sound. You can edit um, the sounds um, to your liking. So, um, so here's the Berlin D. as it comes out of the box. Um, when you open the Kronos, nothing has been edited, nothing has been changed. Uh, but as you can see, if I click on German D, Dark One, I'm gonna get a completely different piano altogether. So that's something that's completely different. So you can play with these various ones. Uh, a lot of them are are definitely quite different than uh, one another and it's a good starting point and you find one that's a good starting point for you and then you can begin to edit some of the other parameters um, so I'm going to go back to the German uh, Berlin D2 uh, S. Now, just a you know, just for a little fun fact, any of the samples here that have a small S next to it, the Japanese C2S, the Japanese 3 uh, S, the Austrian 1 Bright 2S. If it has an S, that means that they've used stretch tuning, and stretch tuning is something is a technique that um, piano tuners use because in the higher registers, if you do not tune them a little bit higher than they're really supposed to be according to a tuner uh, then the notes are actually going to sound flat to most people's ears it does have regular ones as well uh, like a regular tuning um, and the higher registers if you have a good ear you can hear that the higher registers actually sound uh, a little bit off uh, pitch they sound a little bit flat um, the stretch tuning gets rid of that flat sounding but they have both of them there for you, just in case you don't want to do the stretch tuning, uh, you could do that as well. Uh, so now coming over to the right of the screen, um, starting at the top, we have a volume. Volume's pretty self-explanatory. You click on it here, and you can turn it up and down. So we just adjust the overall volume of your sample. The next one is pan, where you could pan uh, left and right. Uh, right now it's in the default is in the center, but of course we can uh, change it to where now it's coming out of the left or we can change it to where it's coming out of the right. If you're wearing headphones, you could hear that. If we go all the way to the left, 
what you will see is a parameter is called random. That means every single note that I hit, as I hit a different note, it's going to pan randomly somewhere else. So it's not going to stay in one place. I hit one note, has one kind of pan, and it's just randomly panning the keyboard. So, you know, that's something that you would use as some sort of a special effect or something like that. I don't know that uh, you would use that when you're just playing the piano regularly, uh, but that's some sort of special effect that you can uh, that you can use. Um, next parameter here is going to be what's called the stereo perspective. Uh, the stereo perspective has two options. You have player and you have audience. Basically, you can have the sound coming through the system. <laughs> as if you are the player. In other words, you're sitting at the piano, what does it sound like? Well, your low notes are gonna be more to the left-hand side because that's where the low strings are and your high strings, your high notes, are gonna be more off to the right-hand side if you're sitting at the piano. If you switch it to audience, that actually reverses. So now the low notes come more from the left, from the, uh, excuse me, from the right-hand side and the high notes come more on the right hand side. So basically it changes the perspective as if you're standing on the other side of the piano looking at the person play the piano. So two perspectives there, you have player and you have audience. Octave uh, is pretty self-explanatory. If you go up an octave, it takes it up an octave, or you can go down in octaves. So you can adjust it so that your whole piano is shifted. octave-wise. So that's um, pretty self-explanatory. The next one is going to be transpose, and that's going to go uh, over semitones, or you can change the semitones. You can go up semitones, or down semitones, even hitting the same note. Um, the next uh, parameter is going to be uh, lid position. So the lid position can be adjusted. Right now it's fully open. That's what it means when it's at 100. If I take it all the way down to zero, as you can see the graphic goes down. And it changes the parameter to playing a grand piano with the lid down. If I go take it up, it's all the way up. Or I can go anywhere in between. So it doesn't have to be all the way open or all the way closed. I can be in between. Uh, let's take it all the way back up for now. The next thing there is going to be release time. Release time is just the release time of the note. How long it takes the note a note once you've released it how long it takes for that note to really decay right now it sets to zero that's the default if i take it all the way up to 100 and hit a note see how much longer it rings out or i can take it all the way down to minus 100 and it cuts off <laughs> uh like immediately um and you know i i hear some gospel guys a lot of gospel guys with this kind of sound. They have that kind of sound where it cuts off pretty quick. So uh, that's a common sound in the uh, in the gospel world. So, uh, but anyway, that controls the release time. Now, velocity bias is um, is a little bit kind of it's kind of hard for me to explain. But basically, what it is is you can compress one velocity while enhancing another. In other words, you can compress the more softer tones and enhance the louder tones or vice versa. So let me just, let me show it. I can show you better than I can explain it. So right now it's set to its default. If I take it all the way down to minus 100, Now my volume hasn't gone down, but the 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 velocity the velocity of pianissimo though those those tones are being enhanced. So it basically cr creates a darker piano. I can go the opposite way if I go all the way up by 100, all the way up to 100. Now the like the fortissimo tones are being enhanced and the pianissimo tones are being compressed. So when I hit it, 
it creates a brighter sound without it getting louder but it's basically the same sound that you would get on a piano if you actually hit it hard but with the chronos you don't have to do that you don't necessarily have to hit it hard you can adjust the tone or the velocity bias and you can get that sound so you know, I like to think of it in terms of if you want something that's a dark sound, you take it down. And if you want something that's a bright kind of a tone, you take it up. So I hear people oftentimes saying, oh, you know, I don't like the chrono sounds. I don't like the piano sounds. They don't cut through a mix, so on and so forth. And it makes me kind of wonder if they've ever gone through the velocity bias and maybe just taking it up because you're playing a piano that's uh, going to be more dark it may not necessarily cut through uh, you can hit the velocity bias turn the velocity bias up and suddenly you have something that's a brighter piano um, so anyway just uh, something for you to look into uh, velocity intensity uh, it's a little harder for me to explain but basically you take it all the way down um, to minus 100 and everything is loud even when you hit it quietly um, if I take it all the way up to 100 everything is quiet and I've got to really hit it really hard to get any kind of volume so basically um, you know, it adjusts the, I think it's the velocity volume modulation, something like that. But basically it, it adjusts the touch for you. So you can adjust the touch the way that you like to, the way that you like to have it. The default is just going to be on zero. And right now we're still on that velocity. We still have that velocity bias all the way up. That's why it sounds so bright. Perfect. So the next parameter, uh, the next parameters is under components here, and uh, you have your damper resonance. So you can add resonance with your damper. If I take it all the way up and hit the, and hold the damper down, you hear the resonance from the damper versus with it all the way down versus. So that's the damper resonance. Then you have damper noise. That's the actual noise of the damper. If you can hear that sound when I hit the sustain pedal, you can hear the noise here. If you have one headphones, that is. If you take it all the way down, sustain pedal, no sound. Um, then you can have the mechanical noise. So I can take it all the way down, have no mechanical noise. I can take the mechanical noise all the way up. And when I release it, you can hear you can hear the piano making some more noise. And same with the note release as well. Works in conjunction with your damper noise and your mechanical noise. Now you can just turn these off if you want to by just hitting the red, the red boxes on the sides and then all of those uh, parameters are actually instantly off or you can click them and turn them on and they're on. So if I'm playing or recording something in the studio and I've got a piano, I may come through and adjust a lot of these parameters, uh, these various components and whatnot, um, give it a little bit of you know, I like to have damper resonance versus not having damper resonance. You know, so a lot of times if I'm just, just doing some sort of solo.
I'll put the damper resonance in there. But when I'm playing live, all of these parameters are off because it just adds noise to my mix and uh, it just starts covering everything up. It sounds muddy. That's when it's like hard to cut through. It just, it's just extra noise. So if I'm going to, when I'm playing live, then I like to have it to, I like it to be a lot cleaner uh, without the resonance, the extra resonance and the extra noise and stuff like that. So I get, uh, I definitely get rid of that stuff and my velocity bias um, normally. It's going to be higher. Because I don't want a lot of sounds and noises and stuff like that coming through um, front of house. And they handle like the effects and stuff there. So anyway, uh, next thing here, let's go over to this tab where it says a string resonance in Unicorta. That's what it stands for. That's STR Rezo in Unicorta. And right now the string resonance is on. Is string resonance. It basically emulates a piano. Like when you hit one string on a piano, That string doesn't just ring out all by itself. Uh, it's going to cause some of the other strings inside the piano to, to ring out. So when I hold this low C down and hit this C here, you can hear the C, this C, you can still hear it ringing. If I hit it by itself, it's, it doesn't continue to ring that way. But if I'm holding this down and then I hit it, you hear it ring out. And that's what a real piano would do. So it's just all about adding more of that realism. Again, live, I actually turn that off. So there's no string resonance most of the time um but you know if i'm playing in a studio and want something more detailed i'll turn the string resonance on now i can also adjust the string resonance the depth in other words how much string resonance do you want so you can turn the string resonance all the way up to 127 right and it's going to be more pronounced see how that rings out really loud Basically, it's creating those, all that sound you would hear inside of the wood of the piano. And so you can, you know, adjust how, just how much string resonance you want by adjusting the level of the string resonance. You can hear all those other tones coming through with the string resonance. So uh, really, really detailed stuff there. Uh, next, uh, some of the patches uh, have Unicorda, uh, the, the Berlin um, sample that I'm using, that Berlin D2. It has Unicorda samples. Unicorda is basically soft pedal. If I hit the screen here, you depress the soft pedal like you would on the piano, gives you a different sound. versus without it on. All right, excellent. So basically, when you start to add all of these various parameters up and things that you can adjust, uh, your piano can sound way different than it does coming out of the box. And I think um, with all of the various piano samples that you have to choose from, uh, whether you want it to have stretch tuning or not, whether you want to add string resonance or not, whether you want to pick a sample that has uh, unicorda, whether you want something that's dark, let's say we could pick the, the German dark, uh, let's do that German, uh, let's do the Japanese dark one. So we do the Japanese dark one. Whether 
Yeah. Right. And uh, I could take the Japanese dark one. I could take the the velocity bias. Right now it's set to uh, plus forty. Let's take that all the way down so that the pianissimo is really pronounced and the fortissimo is really compressed and then you get a different sound right now if i do that and i take the lid down let's just take the lid down i can i can actually click and drag the lid down i don't necessarily have to uh, adjust it this way uh, but i can click and just drag it down all the way to zero so now the lid is closed now listen So now the sound is a bit more um, intimate. And just by doing those small tweaks and changing some various things, you get a completely different sound. So I encourage you, even just with those things, play around with the various samples, play around with the various things that are inside, play around with those various parameters, and find some different pianos that you uh, that you like for different purposes, and uh, save them in the Kronos. Uh, you will not be disappointed. Well, that's it for me. I hope this helps. Hope you learned something, and uh, I will see you guys on the next video video.